Welcome to our lecture today on blood transfusion. My name is Dr. Manyara. Be sure to check our other videos in this medicine series. Without much ado, let's get into the discussion of today. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to define what blood transfusion is, explain some of the blood products, as well as the types and indications of transfusion. Screening tests are also very crucial for patient safety and therefore you must do screening tests before a transfusion is carried out. In the next video after this, we will tackle the side effects, that is the reactions and the complications that come with transfusion. So let's get going. First, let us see the function of blood and this is highly summarized that blood keeps us warm because the temperature is well regulated. Blood provides nutrients for all body organs and also removes any waste products for the body to be able to function optimally. So going back to blood transfusion, what is blood transfusion? It is simply the transfer of blood or blood products from one person who is known as the donor to another who is the recipient. Blood transfusion can either be for replacement or therapeutic purposes. For example, when there has been a lot of loss of blood or simply replacing clot clotting factors or certain elements of the blood, for example, replacement of platelets or white blood cells in specific patients. And as we give the blood, we must decide to give it to give life to the people that are receiving it. Therefore, blood transfusion must be safe, and for it to be safe, it must be screened for blood-borne infections, including HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, syphilis, malaria, but these are just some of them. Remember also to take a very good history from the donors because there is those diseases that are not yet manifested, and the donor may be in that incubation period. The last thing you want to do is to give hazardous blood that turns things from bad to worse for the already unwell person. So just so that you may understand, one unit of blood gives one fresh frozen plasma unit, one unit of red blood cells, and one unit of platelets. And one unit is equivalent to about 350 to 450 milliliters. Once the blood has been donated, sometimes it requires to be stalled if there's no immediate need for it. It's also crucial to have enough just in case it is required, for example, in massive accidents. However, storage affects the various components of blood. The blood becomes more acidic and there's also increase in plasma potassium as the cells rupture and release intracellular potassium. Platelet function is also lost within 48 hours, as well as factor 8, which gets reduced to about 10 to 20 percent, but other factors remain rather constant. There are four types of blood transfusion, and the first being the fresh blood transfusion, which is transfusion of blood which is less than 24 hours old. Because of the risk of transfusion, if one is going for elective surgery, say for example one is going for cancer surgery in a month's time, they could donate their own blood and keep this aside to get back during the surgery. This is what is called autologous blood transfusion. We may also have what we call massive blood transfusion when a person is transfused with so much blood that exceeds his own volume within 24 hours, say in a massive accident or the person is continuously bleeding. So that is what is called massive blood transfusion. Multiple transfusion, on the other hand, is simply repeated transfusion over a long period of time. And this is what happens in patients with chronic diseases mm -hmm. that predispose them to blood loss. For example, anemia, chronic anemia, or reduction of one or two elements of blood. For example, in hemophiliacs who have loss or less of clotting factors. This is a summary of blood types, and we have four blood types that is a b a 
B and O. O accept blood group O of antigens and therefore O is the universal donor. Since AB has no antibodies, it is the universal recipient. Apart from the ABO system, we also have the resource factor, which is the D antigen. And most of the population is resource positive to about 85%, the rest being resource negative. Therefore, compatibility must take this also into consideration. For example, negative people may develop antibodies if they get resource positive blood, and this can lead to massive hemolytic anemia. Therefore, we have to be very, very careful. Mothers, for example, who are rhesus negative, if given rhesus positive blood, could develop antibodies and the first pregnancy may not even be affected so much, but subsequent pregnancies may result to massive hemolysis, including having stillbirths. So let's go on to look at the components of blood. The commonly used blood and blood products are whole blood, packed cells that could be either red blood cells, white blood cells, or, or even platelets, fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitates, and specific clotting factors are also commonly used. In also, summary, we have looked at the definition of blood transfusion, the indications, the types of transfusion, and some of the blood products. In the next video, we will look at the blood transfusion related reactions and how to manage them for patient safety. So be sure to look out for our next video in this medicine series. Until next time, goodbye. Mm -hmm.